Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Okay. It's Christmas time. Yeah. All right. Let's get your passes on Christmas. No. Well, no, but like it's automatically. And, and listen, I, I, the difference between Christmas time and Easter is that, you know, Easter is, yeah, you, you might lead up to it, you know, Good Friday and Palm Sunday is the one before, and then Easter's a, so there's a little bit of a focus and a joy. And some, but Christmas time, it's just like from now to after New Year's. So you get like, you know, five, six weeks worth of, of people, and you know, as long as you don't go to the mall, you'll be okay. Um, I, I told you last week, I got a new mindset about shopping. I got up early yesterday and went shopping with my wife. You know them dudes sitting in the car? Don't be that dude. Don't be that guy sitting in the car. Go ahead, babe. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you about my old school thought process. I'd be like, man, if I wait in the car, what if somebody messes with my wife? Mm -hmm. So I need to go with us. I have to jack somebody up. <laughs> in the Christmas tree aisle. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm serious. I, like, I didn't think about that. People are joyful. People get a little violent on Christmas Eve. I saw it first time. <laughs> but it's Christmas time. So what time is it? It's time that people give a little bit more. Some corporations give more because the year end's coming. They're going to make sure that they get some write-offs for their taxes. People give more because it's the joy of the season. There's more times. That Giving Tuesday was just obviously uh, last week, right? So, so it's a time to give more. You know the largest Christmas gift ever given? was given to the United States. It was the Statue of Liberty in 1886. The France, because it would be helped, you know, going to the war, the war, and they helped out, and so they gave us that, that, that gift. But you know what the biggest gift ever given to the world was? It was Jesus. I, I challenge anyone, go online, you can Google everything, you can get everything you want at your fingertips. Find something, and you can come to me, and I will come back and I'll apologize next week. Find something that, that is bigger than Jesus ever to exist in the world. And there's nothing. I'm not saying that because I'm a Christian. Before I became a true believer, I researched. Because the pastor I went to, the first church, I said, see if the Bible's true. Check it out. And I found, listen, I found things that you know, were against it. But I found, you know, like 10 to 1 that was, this is true. This man walked the planet. The Bible's real. And then when the Spirit of God filled me, then I knew it was on because I wasn't hallucinating like I used to back in the day, taking all kinds of junk. I just felt something that was so supernatural, so body-shaking, mind-transforming. It had to be God. Amen. It had to be God. And there's nothing you're going to find anywhere. No book, no library, no historical association, nothing that's going to show you more times who Jesus was, what he's trying to do, and what he's coming back to do. And he's the biggest Christmas gift ever given to this world. Was it, was it given so we can use it like some of the gifts we're going to get? No. It was given to save our souls. And see, normally we give a Christmas gift to somebody. Well, I almost said somebody we like. Sometimes we don't. You got to go somewhere, you know. They're like, man, I got to get it. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How about this one? I'm going to leave this gift in a car. In the car and see if they give me one first. <laughs> you are all you're all asking. <laughs> He's the biggest gift ever given. And he, he came and he gave it to people who didn't deserve it. See, normally the gifts we give are to people that deserve to give them. Maybe a spouse, a friend, a child, a niece, a nephew, whatever it might be, a co-worker. But he, he came to die for sinners. For people that the scriptures tell us were his enemy. Before you know Jesus, you're his enemy. Not because I say so, the word of God says so. Now we're titling this little series, listen, listen. The present, P-R-E-S-E-N-T, of his presence. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Because that's what he was. He was a present that brought God's presence. Here on this earth. Now the spirit used to come before Jesus came. But it only came to hover over us. Or around the situation. But when Jesus came. And then he died and ascended. He sent the Holy Spirit to live inside us. So when you, when you felt a little something going on during worship time. It's because of what's inside of us. It's his presence. Of his presence. 
And that's what we're going to look at going over these next couple of weeks. And I, and I wrote this, I had this thought, like, was there ever really anything you ever received at Christmas time, a, a gift that was really more than Jesus and his word? Or, or, or I don't care if you got a car, I don't care if somebody gave you a house. And whoever that person was, give them my number. <laughs> right? I don't care what you received. There's nothing or no one that's given us more than Christ. Right? Who, who, what gift did you ever receive that ever blessed you more, helped you more, guided you more, strengthened you more, matured you more, corrected us more, empowered us more, and straight up loved us more? No I don't care how strong your marriage is. My little pastor Elaine does not love me more than Jesus, and I don't love her more than I love Jesus. And she'll be the first one to tell you. You might think that's wrong. No. When we, can, when we can get to that place, I'm not telling you that going on either, okay? I got issues. But when we can get to that place, guess why you'll never love another person more than you do? Because that's what he does. And he, he's given us his word to guide us and to show us. Remember, Jesus is the word of God. John 1, 1, 3, listen, listen. In the beginning, before all time, was the word, Christ. And the word was with God, and the word was God himself. He was continually existing in the beginning, co-eternally with God. All things were made and came into existence. Listen, through him and without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. Everything's about Jesus. Everything. And I thank God we still live in a country where Jesus is a focus. You know, I see a little shifting where people, you know, happy holidays. And, but I see some people starting to say Merry Christmas. Let me tell you why I think that's happening. People have never been more desperate. They try everything else. Buddha, Allah, whatever other thing you want to put out there. Okay, and there's only one thing. Listen, there ain't no spirit of Buddha that comes alive in you. There's no spirit of Allah that comes alive. It's only the spirit of God. It's only the presence of his presence that comes to live in us. And then he left us his word, like I said, to guide us and to give us the direction. So we title today's message, The Present Worth Giving. If there's anything you want to give this year to someone that doesn't know Jesus, share Jesus with them. You don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to know the Bible backwards or frontwards. Just tell them what he's done for you. I used to be messed up, and he cleaned me up. I used to have major issues. Now I just got issues. But they used to consume me before. But now, his presence consumes us. Come on. So the present worth giving. Let's stand and read the word. Come on, let's stand and pray. Lord, we thank you for this message today, Lord. I pray for everyone here listening, everyone online, and those who are going to hear this in the future, Lord. I pray that we allow the scriptures to transform us, encourage us, empower us. I don't know where everybody's at today, Lord, but if you're having some issues, open your heart, open your mind. Let the word of God saturate you. I don't care if you don't even know who Jesus is. His Holy Spirit will speak to you because he loves all his creation. And we thank you for this word. In your name, amen. You can see it, please. We're going to read Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. This is the, the birth of Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. FYI, they saw his star. It, it's his. It's his. It's all his. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And though you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell us 
And tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. This is a star. It's a star in the sky. You know how big a star? And it's moving. <laughs> now, it ain't a shooting star. It's a positioning star. And it, and it stops right over Jesus. Come on. Come on. When, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Listen, listen. When they saw the star, knowing that that's where Jesus was going to be, they didn't even see him yet, but they were filled with joy. Listen, they entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Because Herod wanted to kill Jesus. He didn't want Jesus to get in glory because he was the king and he wanted the glory. I love that the wise men were filled with joy before they even went to see Jesus. They just knew that they were going to see him. And maybe someone today doesn't know him. Maybe somebody watching or, like I said before, is going to watch and you don't know him. There could be a joy right now going, I want to get to know this Jesus. He's the gift that God gave the world. Okay? And, and, and these wise men came to give him gifts of worship. He was the newborn king of the Jews. And, 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 they, and they came because they heard about it. It was, it was spoken about it. They saw the star. They wanted to go. They wanted to see. Who, who, who is this, this newborn king? What, what's all the... And listen, there was a lot. This has been talked about for thousands of years beforehand. They just didn't think he was going to come humbly and lowly. They thought he was going to be like this grand entrance and, and servants around and people are, here's the king of the Messiah. That's not how Jesus works. Listen, when we get to heaven, we'll be like that. Amen. But down here, it's a humble, open heart, open mind, mindset. Paul says that he was an indescribable gift. Listen, 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Now thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, which is precious beyond words. He's the only redemption gift ever. You can't buy it. You can't save it. You can't put, you can't go to, oh, remember Christmas fun? Anybody who's older, they still have those? You used to go and get money, you have a Christmas account. You can't even do that, nothing. There's nothing you can do. He came, he's already there waiting for anyone who's looking to receive him. And that's the goal, listen, that's the goal we share all the time. It's for us to get saved and to take people with us. That's the goal. And share this, you know, can you describe Jesus to me? He's loving, he's caring, he's merciful, he's grateful, he's graceful, he empowers me, he provides for me. I mean, we, we, we couldn't even exhaust it because he is indescribable. Because he came down to this dirty world for a bunch of dirty, sinning people at Christmas time to save us. Come on, who does that? Who does that? Nobody. Until you find Jesus in your life. And then you, then, then you want to go and do things. Jesus is a gift of grace. He's an extension of God's love. It's God's only son. And he says it to us during this time, during this Christmas time, to be reminded of, of how much we needed a Savior. That's what I believe is going on. I'm telling you, the last year, I, the last year and this year, I've seen more Christmas signs than just holiday signs. And before that, some of you are shaking your head. Maybe you're sitting there too. It ain't just me losing my mind. I'm be super positive here, right? And it's Merry Christmas, not Happy Holidays. Even in some commercials, I'm like, oh, wow, what's going on? Oh, people know there's only one way. Right. There's only one way. Yeah. Everything else you try, nothing works. I've done it all. It doesn't work. Only Jesus does. Amen. He's a gift sometimes that we can't understand. Because sometimes we don't know why he allows certain things to happen to us. And then we start questioning. But his grace is still there. And he humbly came. Okay? And through his love and God's word, we can get to know him better. When Christ was born, these, these wise men, okay, they, 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 they seeked him out, listen, to bring their treasures to him. Now, moment, if we were going to give somebody a treasure, say, hey, come to my house and meet me. 
right? I'm giving you, that's the mindset. I'm giving you something, I'm gonna come in. I ain't traveling five, six days by cattle, okay? You're like, when you get here, you get, no, no, they seek them out. Sometimes in different areas of our life, we need to seek him out. Right. And sometimes he's right here in situations, but sometimes we put him over there in situations. And those are normally like areas that you know, we want to just keep to ourselves, keep living a certain way. And if he gets too close, he might see it. Here's a little hint, ready? He sees it anyway. David says in Psalm 139, where can I go when your presence isn't there? Nowhere. Nowhere. He loves us. So we're going to look at the wise men and how they went to present their gifts. And, and maybe it will encourage us, hopefully. It will encourage us not only how to give gifts and with the attitude of it, but the main gift that we can share this time of year. And listen, every day, okay? It doesn't have to be just during Christmas time and Easter time. We get, we get the, you know, the Christmas spirit or the Easter spirit. It should be the Holy Spirit all day long. Right. That was pretty good. Christmas spirit, Easter spirit, Holy Spirit. Carlos. <laughs> We're going to read three, three areas, three examples that we get from these wise men. Here's the first one. They gave gifts in person. They didn't sell the money, okay? They, 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 they didn't mail it. They went. They were on a trip. They sacrificed time and resources. Matthew 2, 1 and 2, listen. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About this time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw a star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. They don't say to come to give him gifts. They say come to worship him. The gifts was a secondary thing. And if you saw the true value of what they gave, it's in the millions of dollars compared to today. It just wasn't like, ah, oh, yeah, 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 then about 25 bucks. No, these guys had people with them carrying these treasures, carrying this stuff. This is a major sacrifice of worship to the Messiah. Matthew 2, 11, listen. They entered the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down. They don't give the gifts first. They bowed down and worship him first. Then, it says, they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. See, they worshiped him first. That's what he wants. He wants our worship first. He wants, because that, that's, that, that's your heart. He wants to see where the heart is. You have a heart to worship me. Then do other things. Well, God, I did this for you. Yeah, but you're not worshiping me. God, I, I've been in ministry 25 years. Yeah, but your heart, you're, you're not the, you're just doing some stuff. I, I need you to bow down and worship me so I can fulfill lots of things I want to do in you. Somebody sent me a powerful scripture yesterday about what God wants to do in us and use us for. And they go, Pastor, I just had to send this to you. And it just encouraged me as it encouraged them. These wise men didn't send someone, hey, I heard the, 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 the Messiah, look for this North Star, and, the, and when you get there, here, give them this. No, no. Now listen, these men were like multi, multi millionaires compared to today's, you know, to today's money. Okay? They had, they had hundreds of servants working for them. They were obviously merchants and men with businesses and so on. They, 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 they didn't think it was a waste of time. Don't people treat church like that? Mm. I can watch online. You can't get this. Sorry, everybody online. <laughs> Listen, you can't get this. You can't get that handshake you got a few minutes ago. That fist bump or that hug. You can't get that. You, you can get the message, praise God. But we need more than that. These wise men went in person to present their gifts to the newborn king. Listen, listen, 1 John 4, 9 and 10, listen. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son to the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. See, he sent the gift in person. He sent his son in person. Go down there. And then when he left, he sent us his spirit. A personal spirit. Come on, tell me this ain't true. Don't you feel so bad? And if it ain't everyone on this side, I'll pray for them. I got three bottles of oil over there. But do you ever sometimes just think, God, how are you like watching everybody when you just do so much for me? Because we compare it to that human mindset, like us trying to 
they'll be there for our spouse or our children or friends or family. I said, Tom, I think God is just like, I think it's just me and you. He's like, silly rabbit. <laughs> but it is like that because that's the personal individual God that he is. That's that Holy Spirit we have inside of us. It's an amazing gift. And it's not just for us. Don't be selfish. We have to share this gift with others. Acts 24, 17. After an absence of several years, I came to Jerusalem to bring people gifts for the poor to present offerings. That was Paul the Apostle. He was saving up money. He had people leaving and going to this area. He could have sent it with somebody else, but he wanted to bring it himself. So maybe there's somebody this year that we can present the gift of Jesus to. Personally. Maybe a text just won't do it. Maybe a card saying, God loves you, just won't do it. Maybe sitting down with him, I don't know when's that time. I know. I understand. You gotta make time. Somebody's souls on a line. There are hurting people in this world. I'm going to preach a message in January. The message, the same message I preached at the men's conference. And I said something about this next generation. People complain about them all the time. Hey, they're lazy. They ain't like this. They ain't like that. Listen, they're not lazy. They're broken. They're broken. These next generations are broken because the devil's got a chokehold on them. And if you don't believe me, remember before you met Jesus. Remember, look, think back then. Adeline shaking her head. Young youth girl. She knows. People need Jesus. People need the, the presence of his presence. And guess who he uses? Us. You know what an honor that is? I don't care if your boss says, here, take all this, it's $10,000, don't give it to all our clients. That is nothing. Nothing compared to, hey sons, hey daughters, take this spirit, take this gift that you receive and bring that present to somebody as a present. Share Jesus with them. Do it personally, <clears throat> like, the, like the wise men did. Here's the second thing. They gave gifts unexpectedly. Matthew 2, 9. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. I just, I just love this, this. I know I said it twice about the star, how God's just moving it. It's like, he created it, he do whatever he wants with it. And then the star had seen in the east, I'm sorry, then, and the star they had seen in the east died in the Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. Let me tell you something about going ahead of them. See, when you put somebody in your heart and your mind, I'm going to go meet them unexpectedly. I'm going to go sit with them. I'm going to go talk with them unexpectedly. And God, you're going to go before me. Just like he did with the star. And you're going to set up the area, set up the heart, and open the heart. Listen, people are open right now. It's an ugly, dirty, broken world. Worse than ever. It's getting worse every single day. People are open. And you ain't got to be a preacher. Just share what God has done for you. Mm -hmm. Say, man, you don't know my pastor. This brother's pop. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Open your hearts so we can go, listen, unexpectedly and personally to someone who'll be like, man, you just surprised me. Sometimes you catch them off guard and they don't have time to mess with them and keep them out from meeting with them. Yeah. You just knock on that door and be there. Just to show some love. Listen, Galatians 4 4. Paul writes, listen, but when the time, I'm sorry, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, son to the law. That was the right time. You know what the right time is to share Jesus unexpectedly? All the time. All the time. You know what the problem is? We don't think we have time. We don't think we have time. I saw a great post this week. I reposted it. It was like, church should be the excuse not to do everything else. Hmm. Instead of like, well, I gotta go somewhere and talk. Like, I just like said, I gotta repost that. And all the haters don't want to comment on it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's people I don't even know. I'm like, amen. I'm like, who's that person? They follow us. It's always the right time. 
to share Christ with somebody. You know why? It's always the right time for a soul to be saved. It's always the right time. Jesus came at the right time. Listen, we got saved at the right time. <coughs> Somebody said to me one time, Pastor, don't you wish you didn't live all that in life? I go, maybe, yeah, maybe some of it, but for the most part, it's what he made me today through that stuff. Yeah. And I can use that stuff as a testimony. Yeah. So I think it was a perfect timing for him because he's a perfect God. But unexpectedly showing up somewhere, he unexpectedly showed up. There was no time frame on when he was coming, and there's no time frame when he's coming back. There's a great commercial. I forgot the pastor's name. Jeremiah something. And it's about the rapture. And he goes, millions of people will be gone in an instant. And you might still be standing there. Because yeah. no one knows the time. Right. We need to unexpectedly go to people and share the presence of his presence with them. This is 2 Corinthians 8.14. Right now you have plenty and can help them. Then at some other time, I'm sorry, they, at some other time, they can share with you. Oh my God. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Right now, you have plenty and can help them. Paul's talking about helping people with things. Then, at some other time, they can share with you when you're in, when you can need it. In this way, everyone needs will be met. Paul's basically sharing this going to people that might be in need and not only giving that need, but sharing the gospel. People are in need right now. You know, one in six people are under the poverty level in our country. Is that crazy? This is America. Food banks, whatever the case may be. And people go through hard times, I understand. You have no idea what someone's going through. Right. But you have to make a little time on the and talk to them, you just might find out. Right. Yeah, you know what? My husband's sick. Hey, you know what? My spouse is sick. Hey, you know what? My child's wayward. Hey, you know what? I lost my job and I got no money. And the next thing you know, you're not only sharing the love of God, but you're sharing the need to be met. Isn't that what we're supposed to do as Christians? Does anybody want to do that? Amen. Right? Like, isn't this what we're supposed to be doing? So that we can help people and be there for people and encourage them, especially this time of year. Especially this time of year. And again, like I said, all the time, but right now people are open there. I'm telling you, their hearts are just open for stuff. Here's the third thing we'll ask them. They gave with joy. Matthew 6, 9, and 10. After this interview, the wise men went their way. And the star that they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. Because they knew they were going to see Jesus. Maybe we can have a little joy. And go and share with somebody knowing they can meet Jesus. See, the joy of, of, of giving, the, the joy of sharing this gift. If it's ever a burden, whew, check yourself. If it's ever a burden to do the things of God, the work of God, or share God. Now, I'm not talking about being a challenge, right? Like sometimes, man, I really don't know what to say. Anybody ever, you ever like that when you're with somebody and. And, and so check this out. So when you're with an unbeliever, guess who has the authority in that conversation? I don't care if it's your boss. Mm -hmm. You do. You know why? you got the Spirit of God. Yep. See, when the Spirit of God shows up, authority shows up. Yep. Authority shows up. You guys don't know I have another job. I'm a project manager, right? Do you know, and I've been there 10 months almost now. Do you know a lot of these guys don't curse around me anymore? <laughs> and I never once said, watch your mouth. He's a, he's a union guy. We're talking about the F bomb is like the. <laughs> okay? You know, amongst other things. You know, you know, like dirty jokes and stuff like And then I'll be walking by, oh, all right, don't, don't say that. John's coming over there. Not, I never said one word to them. They just saw my pastor. And a couple of them even shared a couple of personal things with me. And this is why. Not because of me. And I can slap them around. No, I'm like, <laughs> no, because the authority, the Spirit of God is there. Amen. The Spirit of God is there. And when the Spirit of God shows up, when the presence of His presence shows up, we have the authority to control the situation, to love on someone, to share with them. But we have to have the joy in our hearts first to want to do it. These wise men, come on, these guys travel for days, weeks, with all these gifts, all this stuff, with a little caravan of people, and they had joy. There's a star! Listen, we already have that joy, because if you know Jesus, you've accepted him, or maybe 
declare over you today to do that? You'll get that joy. You'll get that joy. The star confirmed where Jesus was. The Holy Spirit confirms where Jesus is with us. He's right here. Listen, Luke 2.10. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. That's Luke's story writing about the wise men. Come on. It's excitingly exciting. You know, I had a thought when I said something uh, two weeks ago when I was, I was encouraging the men. Man, the men, man. Anyway, at the conference when I was preaching, I was just like, man, like, you think I want to get up every Sunday and go to church? Well, sometimes I don't. But most of the time I do. I'm a human being, you know? But, but most of the time I love coming to church, even before I was a pastor. I was like, I, I was a catalyst for my family getting up and getting ready to go to church. And it wasn't no showing up 20 minutes. We were on time. On time in church. I wanted to go. We, we wanted to be the example. Because it's joyful. It's not, oh, gotta go to church. If that's the thing, you, you, better, you better take a look. Take a look inside. Listen, Hebrews 12, 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy set before him, it was a joy to save our souls. Now, I don't think it was a joy we went through, but he went through it anyway. But it was a joy to come here, to die, and give his death, to save us. Shouldn't we have that joy? Amen. To talk to someone about Jesus? See, and that's the thing. The devil will, will, will try, try to intimidate you. I, mean, I can't talk about God. People hate when talk about God. Of course they do. Because this world's against God, for the most part. But we have the authority. Sisters, brothers, we have the authority. When we go somewhere, God's showing up before us. He's saying, what? Wait, you're going to talk to that? Wait, that person who robbed you, you're, you're going to go talk to them? Oh, His presence goes before us. And then when you get there, well, how about this? How many times have you thought a conversation was going to go a certain way? And then we fix it, and it doesn't even happen. You're all smiling. You're smiling because you know it. Because the devil's a liar. He wants to intimidate us, to stop us, and block us from sharing it. I'm going to close with this. Let's be reminded. Listen, listen. Give gifts personally and share Jesus' love with them. Give them unexpectedly and timely. Because this is what Jesus says. And give gifts with joy. Give a gift. Share Christ with someone. Here's Acts 20, 35. And everything I showed you by example, that by working hard in this, may you, may you oh my God, what is wrong with me today? <laughs> in everything I showed you by example, that by working hard in this way, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he himself said, it's more blessed and brings greater joy to give than to receive. See, everything he does is always the opposite of we, what we do. It's always, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Is there anything wrong with receiving? No. But he's saying, hey, can you just share me with somebody? So they can come to know the present and the presence. Amen? Amen. Yeah, if you will get past the lane, please, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning's word. I pray, Father God, that we take this with us, that it would not only encourage us and empower us, but it would guide us to go to someone, someone that needs to know you or just to, just to hear about your love and what you've done for, for us, Lord, as individuals, that we can share what, what, what you, you, you can do for them also, first to save their souls, then everything else you call them to in life. Lord, if anyone's watching online or sitting here, they've never truly opened their hearts to Jesus. Give
given their hearts to Jesus, today can be your death. Today, today can be the day that you receive the presence of his presence. And we thank you, almighty God, that we have this available to us. I pray if anyone has saw this or, 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 or even prayed a, a conscious prayer or go to someone they know who's a Christian and share your heart with them. And I want to accept Jesus. And, and, I, and I, I, I want to be born again. I want a place prepared for me in heaven. And today will be the day. And if someone does that, that they would connect with someone they know, or a good Bible teaching, God love the church. Maybe in this Christmas season, someone's off track and they got to get back on. That today would be their day. They say, you know what? I'm rededicating my life to Jesus. I, I want to walk this walk. I want the present of his presence in my life. And Lord, I pray that as we keep navigating through this Christmas season, that we would, we would, we would give in person, we would give unexpectedly, and we would give with joy the same way you did when you sent your son. And we thank you and we love you. In your name, amen. 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 God bless you, everybody.